Well, Tatum was uh, my mentor, and he, uh, the first time I uh, heard an Art Tatum record, my uncle played, I, was, I, I wanted to play stride piano, and uh, my uncle, uh, my uncle Bob, uh, was my father's brother, uh, played really great stride piano, and I wanted to play like that. And so I said, can you teach me how that? He said, no. He said, here's a record that, that, that maybe will help you a little bit. Of all the records that he could have given me, he gave me a record that Art Tatum uh, made, uh, and I had never heard anything like that. I mean, I, sure, I want to play like that, but when, how? You know, <laughs> you know. So many years later, and many many lessons later, by, by impatient uh, uh, teachers and and people who said, you know, you, you you can't do that. That you know, you play play what's on the on the page. Never mind something. You, you know, you want play what what what's there. You know. So I had to learn how to read read music and do a whole bunch of other stuff before I could even approach what uh, I was thinking about with Art Tatum. <laughs> And Tatum was, uh, uh, it, it was so many years between uh, I, that, that uh, uh, talk with my uncle and uh, through Fats Waller and, and through Teddy Wilson, I, had, I had, to, had to go by all of these other guys to learn, so I could learn something to cope with the, just what I was, was hearing that, that Tatum played. It was uh, so, for me, it was so much... Uh, so far ahead of, of, of anything that I, I had thought of because it was like classical music, uh, European classical music, because uh, it had a beginning, a middle, and an end, and it had uh, a form that, that was unlike anything I knew. Just two quick notes about the other speakers. I practically lived in Boston at a place called the Savoy Cafe. That's where I heard all kinds of musicians. I was on the radio, so I got to know them. But one of the great pleasures at the Savoy Cafe, not only for me, but uh, there was a pianist there who played with a lot of them, and when he sang, Oh, look at there, ain't she pretty, <laughs> the room just froze in, in appreciation. His name was George Ween. <laughs> and the dumbest thing that CBS ever did was to stop the Sunday morning series that Billy Taylor did. It was probably the most, the best educational and just extraordinarily pleasurable series in the whole history of jazz on television. Thank you. That you know, um, Nat talks about, we're going down, you will be next. We're going down, uh, uh, Nat talks about the Savoy in Boston, and um, it was very fascinating because we were all learning in those days, and Nat, of course, is perhaps the most, has the highest IQ of anybody I've ever knew in my life. You know, he's very, very, very intelligent guy. I mean, and we sat there, and he was talking about communism, socialism, things I knew nothing about, and, you know, I mean, and, and I was learning from him. I really was. He's a very bright guy, you know, and, you know, he's, 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 sometimes I don't agree with what he says, but I mean, he's a very bright guy. <laughs> but we had a ball in those days, and it was very formative years, and they were very important. But the thing is, I was at the Southland at the same time you were when Cab Calloway was playing there. I could tell you every member of the band. Can you tell them every member of the band? Hilton Jefferson and the alto and Walter Foots Thomas and, yeah, yeah. and Jonah Jones on the trumpet and uh, I think Benny Payne was a piano player, Milt yeah, Hinton yeah. on bass and Cozy Cole on drums. I mean, we learned in those days. We were, I used to go to the South with my brother. We were both kids and we got there. Just fascinating. So, but this guy, what he's done and what he's written about and what he meant to this world of jazz, let's see. I mean, I sang, well, look at the rain cheap pretty, but he's done a lot more than that and that ends up. <laughs> no, the thing about this music is once it becomes part of you, you can never get enough of it. And to have been and to get to know to some extent some of these creators, a quick story, Ellington, I went to all the Ellington dances when he played Boston. I can't dance, but my... Chin was just on the bandstands. I was so close to this, and I thought I knew his repertory pretty well, but I heard a song I hadn't heard before. So I, there was a break, and I whispered to Harry Carney, what's that? He said, I don't know, he just wrote it. <laughs> so I was there at history. <laughs> it was so, so wonderful to have uh, uh, George. The first, uh, I was working at Birdland, 
and Joe Jones uh, came. He was we worked together on a lot of things, and he said, "I got a job for you." I said, "Yeah, that's nice." That's a, uh, but I got it. Um, you know, I'm house painting this here, so I can't very well leave. He said, well, you can for, for, for a week or so. So I said, what do you mean? He said, well, I got a job for you in Boston. I said, oh, well, okay. Uh, what, what is it? He said, well, it's a nice nightclub up there, and I want you to go up there and, and play. I said, well, terrific. And uh, Joe was my manager, uh, mentor. He, I mean, he, he, he told me anything he told me. I said, that was gospel. So I said, okay, <laughs> straight, straight ahead. So I said, well, I have to put together a, a trio. He said, no, I got a trio for you. And so, so, he, so he put together a trio with Charles Mingus uh, on, yes. on bass and and and. Joe uh, Jones. No, this 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 was this was what was uh, Marcus, uh, uh, Marcus Marcus, Marcus you know, yeah. and 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 because uh, I said, well, who, what am I gonna get for? He said, we got a, a guy from 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 Boston that you like, and so I said, okay, so. I, I got on the train and, and went to Boston, and on the way, uh, I, 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 I was traveling with, with, with the, my two B basses. I've heard him play with, with uh, Red, Red Norville, but I didn't know him. We argued from the time we got on the, on the, on the train to the time we got off. We couldn't agree on anything, you know, except the music. I mean, could, we, anything I could play, he, he, he was right, right on it. And we could, we, but but we, 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 we talked about all kinds, just a, anything you want to talk about. He, he, he had, an, had an opinion, and it was oh, yeah. usually something I disagreed with. You know? <laughs> the reason I mentioned Joe Jones, he was the house drummer at that time. He got me that job. He, he yeah. told me, to, told me yeah. to come there. Yeah, that's exactly what. But I sat in. I had a lot of nerve in those days. I sat with Mingus and Joe and John. Right. And they had start, got in a fight. Who could play faster? <laughs> I mean, it's literally the case. I mean, the two of them, Mingus and, and Joe Jones, I mean, they were most fantastic guys you ever knew, but they were a little, you know, they, they had their own things going, you know. I mean, sometimes you understood them, sometimes you didn't understand them. But, but they started playing and found a new baby, and they kept playing faster, faster, faster. I mean, they, I, and, and it was really, and I'm sitting there on the piano, and of course I couldn't play. I mean, Billy was the one guy, I played a tape for Billy, I'll never forget, and I, and I loved him for it, because people would always say nice things. Billy said, man, you're doing everything wrong, and I never forgot that. <laughs> And I think that was great, because people always say things, and I, I know what I'm doing wrong, too, because I can't do any better than that. I haven't done, I haven't gone through what Billy did. But uh, we got together one night, and I'll never forget it. Billy and I were asked by the Urban League, the New York Urban League, to play. And they wanted us to play for like 15 minutes. And 35 <laughs> minutes later, we were still playing the two, two piano duets. It was marvelous. It had a lot of fun. We were having fun. We destroyed the whole evening. We upset the whole schedule for the evening we played. For. <laughs> so one night at Sturyville in Boston, Joe Jones was the drummer, and he got up, and he just with his sticks, he went around the room, continuing to play. Swinging isn't even the word. The invention was incredible. On the walls, on the tables, and it was just stunning. No photographs there, no recordings, but it's like another time I, I wish I had a recording. It was at Minton's in Harlem, and I came up to see somebody, but all of a sudden in the room were Sarah Vaughan and Ella Fitzgerald, and they had what used to be called a cutting contest. And wow, if I only had had a tape recorder. Anyway, that, but these are the memories that, that you never forget. And you don't have to have lived them, the music is there, but to have lived them is what the greatest privilege I have ever had. I wish I'd met James Madison, but I knew Duke Ellington, that's something. <laughs>